Zechariah chapter 8, verse 9. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets. Well, Zechariah is speaking. Which were in the day of the foundation of the house of the Lord of hosts, that be Ezra and Nehemiah, and the past prophets we've studied so far, was laid and the temple might might be built. It is not built yet. For before these days there was no hire for men, no employment, nor any hire for beasts using animals like tractors and uh, asses were to be used for heavy burdens. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, everyone, against his neighbor. Because they weren't doing what they were supposed to be doing. They had taken care of their needs and never mind God. But now I will not be unto the residue of this people as in the former days, saith the Lord of hosts. Future, for the seed shall be prosperous, children. The vine shall give her fruit, grapes. The ground shall give her increase, crops. So to see that seed be prosperous, and you say, well, that's the plant. Well, the plants are the ground. The heaven shall give their due. And I will, God will cause the remnant of this people to possess all the things, all the land. And it shall come to pass that as ye were a curse among the heathen, O house of Judah, O house of Israel, carried away captive, so will I have, so will I save you, and ye shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong again. Let your hands be strong. Now, America has used that uh, uh, Boston pride, Orlando pride. There's no pride. Let your hands go about the work of the Lord. Building the temple, maintaining the ground. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, as I thought to punish you, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, when your fathers provoked me to wrath, wilderness, saith the Lord of hosts, I repented not. Alright, so that's not during Moses. Because God would tell Moses, step aside, let me at him, I'm going to clear him out. And Moses would speak to God, Moses would be a mediator, and God would be, alright, I repent. So this is at Jeremiah. And it got to a point with Jeremiah that God told you, Jer don't even pray for them. Warn them, but they're not going to listen. So again, I have thought in these days to do well unto Jerusalem. To the house of Judah, fear ye not. These are the things that ye shall do. Speak every man the truth to his neighbor. That's not the church age, and that's not America. That's not the world today. You got churches, you're speaking lies. Execute judgment of truth and peace in your gates. Now, if you go back to chapter 7, earlier, verse 9, we read and studied. Thus speaketh Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment. Show mercy and compassion on every man to his brother. That's Jewish. Now, here in chapter 8, verse 16, neighbor, that's Jewish. That can also be Gentile. And what we have is true. True. 
You can have judgment and it be a lie, it be deception, be wrong. And there will be no peace in the game. Let none of you imagine evil in your hearts. So see, sinning is not just acting and doing. Sinning can be thoughts against his neighbor. And love no fault. Oh, that's America. They swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, then they lie out their teeth. We are, we are in election year. He'll promise you everything under the sun and when they get that vote and win the election. No one ever calls them on what their big mouths open up for the campaign. You know, we got this media that reports and this media that tells you, why don't somebody follow these idiots around with a pen and paper, write down everything they say, and then when it comes time for a re-election, well, look what you didn't do, look what you didn't do, look what you didn't do. They're saying, make America great. Make America great again. It wasn't great the first time. I'm sorry, I come to think, I mean, though everything is a chaos, I think Roe versus Ray was turned over with a Democrat president, not the Republican president. And, you know, these, these Christians are all saying, oh, you know, we're, we're going to pay for your college tuition, we're going to pay for your college. No, you know, it shouldn't be we're going to pay for your college tuition and your loans is we should look at the college and say, hey, how can we pay all this money for tuition and there's no career to follow that piece of paper? That piece of paper you get from colleges today is not even enough to wipe your butt and clog the toilet. And no plumber goes to college to learn how to be a plumber. Oh, that went off well. For all these things that I hate, saith the Lord. God says, I hate when you imagine evil in your heart. The God of love. God is love. God's also a judgmental, righteous judgment in truth and peace. And there are things that God hates in Proverbs. I think it's 29 or 30. See, it's not, okay, it's not only, well, I'm going to deceive the guy I sold the used car to. I know that's a clunker. I know it's a lemon. I'm going to deceive him. It's not that. Is you get that car in your car lot, you know it's a piece of crap. And you sell it. No, I wonder who I can sucker this car on. I wonder who I can unload this piece of crap real estate. Yeah, I know it's bad and all that, but I, my lawyers told me what I can say and what I can't say. This and all that. I know exactly what my lawyer team. I can know where the fine line is. I can walk legally where they don't have a case in the court. Well, I know that car is bad. Uh, you know, if we just let it go, we'll just do a recall. It's, it'll be much cheaper. God says, I hate that. That is the common practice of American business and American politics. And that's the common practice of the American churches, including the Baptists. You're going to get up there and you're going to do what and say whatever they want you to say. So you still have a job next Sunday. And this country, you swear to tell the truth and nothing but the truth, so help me, God. And you lie. God says, I hate that. And the word of the Lord of hosts came unto me, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, to fast without food, without water. There are several different types of fast. In the fourth month, the fast in the fifth month, this is all in the law, 
the fast of the seventh month, and the fast fast of the tenth month. That seventh month is a busy month of the Jewish calendar. There were feasts in the seventh month, and there were also fasting. You know, the church today, we got the feasts, we got the fellowships, where's the fast? Shall be to the house of Judah, Israel, general, joy and gladness. And you would say, that's oxymoronic. How is it? I'm not going to have nothing to eat. I'm not going to have nothing to drink in a period of time. How is that to be joy and gladness? That God will bless you. And cheerful feasts. As I said, there are feasts in the seventh month. And if you fast with the right heart, with the right motive, when it comes time to that feasting, therefore love the truth and peace. Well, we read that peace is when you execute the judgment of truth. And then peace in the gates. This all time, you can't just say peace, peace, peace without putting it all together. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, It shall yet come to pass that there shall come people and inhabitants of many cities. The inhabitants of one city shall go to another, saying, Let us go speedily to pray before the Lord, Jehovah, and seek the Lord of hosts, I will go also. All right, let's go to Jehovah. And many people and strong nations, plural, that's Gentiles, shall come to seek the Lord of hosts in Jerusalem. You did find this in Acts. You did find in the gospel where people, Gentiles, came to Jesus, came to the apostles. We're here, we want to see Jesus. This is also a millennial. And pray before the Lord. It's amazing how these Baptists, they talk about, we go to the Holy Land, we go to the Holy Land. You never say, I'm going to over the Holy Land. And you never have, and they sometimes they go with the church, they never have a church service. They don't go over the Holy Land and say, hey, you know what? In this spot here where, where something happened in the Bible, we, we got down our knees and we sought God. We didn't go to where Joshua crossed over the Jordan River we didn't go over there and cross it and sat on our, on our, on our butts and, and kneeled on our knees and, and say, Lord God, this is the place where you're going to bring your people, Israel. You're going to bring them into the, into the promised land for one last time. Come on, Lord, let it happen. They don't go over to the Holy Lord, the Holy Land, the Lord. Jesus, when are your feet going to walk these streets again? Thus saith the Lord host, in those days it shall come to pass that ten men, Gentile, ten is the number of Gentile, shall take hold out of all the languages of the nations, even shall take hold of the skirt of him that is a Jew, and in the law he say, How do you know? The law prescribed that Jew was to put a ribbon of blue around the hem of his border. That's in the law. I believe that was after the second time. The water from the rock. The first or second time. God said, put a ribbon of blue around your border. Well, this... Right here we'll tell, hey, that's a Jew. We will go with you. You know, you know, said, you know we, when we go over to the Holy Land, 
You don't go over there looking for a Jew. You go over looking for an Arab. You go over there looking for a Catholic. Don't tell me. I've talked to the people going to the Holy Land. I talked to uh, these people. They, they go to the Ark Encounter. Well, I just read my Bible today. God said he put a door in the side of the Ark. Well, how come when you look at the, the, the map of the Ark, there's a door for the entrance, and then there's an exit door that brings you out to the gift shop. Where's that in Genesis? Where's the elevator? You see, the Christians are stupid. We are in the millennium. And we've read in countless places where the Gentiles there, they grab hold of that Jew and look. For we have heard that God is with you. Let's kick the Jehovah Witnesses right in the hiney because they're going back knocking on doors again. That's Emmanuel. Gabriel told Mary, you shall name him Emmanuel because God is with us. That's Emmanuel. That's Emmanuel, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the tribe of the Lion, the tribe of Judah, as a king in Jerusalem. And the Gentiles have enough in their thought to think, hey, we're going to seek God. That's good. But we better grab hold of the Jews. We better let them guide us too. Because you ain't going to walk up to Jesus, my man Jesus. I think Jesus and I, we're just going to sit down and have a chat. I don't know. That ain't going to happen. And this all follows those feet days. This is the time when the Jews, the three times a year, the, the Jews will appear before God, Jesus, in the in three times in Jerusalem. And the Gentiles say, hey, we want to go with you. God is with you. We want to do right. Tell us what we need to do. Tell us how we need to do it. 